Africans don't want your stinky t-shirts and other mythbusters. Let's play a game of word association. I'll say a word and you tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Ready? Africa. Did you think of any of these words? If so, you're probably not alone. In fact, if Western news media is to be believed, there's not much else going on on the continent except for death, destruction, and disease. This is hardly surprising. It's simply how the news works. If it bleeds, it leads, and arguably Africa is no different from anywhere else. The problem is not that the news is full of negative stereotypes about Africa, but that our narrative has only marginally improved since John Locke wrote about encountering beasts with no houses in 1561. And the stereotypes are everywhere. Take Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who has talked about being criticized by a professor for creating characters that were not authentically African. And it seems literature's single story of Africa comes bound with a single book cover. As Columbia PhD student Simon Stevens discovered, if you write a story that has anything to do with the continent, no matter where it's set and no matter what it's about, your book will get the Acacia Chi treatment. The fashion industry also loves an African stereotype. For Louis Vuitton, Africa is all lion cubs, giraffes, and, wait for it, acacia trees at sunset. As the adage goes, a picture is worth a thousand words, so creative directors have it figured out. If Native Americans run with wolves, then us Africans love legging it after leopards. Just look at Naomi Go. There are countless other examples. The African in Hollywood films is the warlord, the slave, the child soldier, the object of sexual desire, or the extra playing a foreign dignitary. How do I know he's African? Why, his dashiki, of course. Just don't look for us in sci-fi. There are no Africans in the future. And the aid industry is notoriously bad at perpetuating a stereotype of a chaotic continent where unspeakable things happen. I guess if your heart is in the right place, you don't have to care much about development with dignity. After all, the Band-Aid boys do ask a pertinent question. Do they know it's Christmas time yes, they do. Still, the narrative is slowly changing, and one reason that's happening is the internet. Yeah, you heard right. Africans enjoy Facebook stalking their school friends just as much as anyone. But more importantly, they're using the web to reach the world with their own stories or at least go online to call out lazy, damaging stereotypes. I want to get a million shirts donated to the people of Africa. They all need shirts. With falling data costs and increasingly cheap smartphones, thanks China, expect Africans to be joining the global conversation online. Mobile phone subscription is predicted to rise from 635 million to 930 million by the end of 2019. African digital publishers might not be taking over the world yet, but when Kanye West signed Nigerian singer Daband to his record label in 2011, it was clear that Afrobeat definitely had. <laughs> Is your coupe décalé better than hers? Sometimes what you hear about Africa will be negative. Other times it'll be positive. But what do you expect from a land that spans 30.2 million square kilometers, is home to more than a billion people from some 2,000 distinct ethnic groups who speak just as many languages? Listen, Africa doesn't need saving. All she needs is for people to hear this and simply be open to whatever comes next. We can all agree that one of the things that's wrong with the world is other people's mistaken idea of what's wrong with the world and consequent problem-causing attempts to, in their view, problem-solve. We're all of a mind until we get into the difficult territory of whom we mean. So let's not.